Hello and welcome to today's tutorial on how to engage your audience. I am Michelle Arbuckle, Director of the OLA Super Conference, and today we are going to look at how you can turn on the features that allow your audience to ask questions of you and your co-presenters, and also allowing them to contribute to the discussion board where they can chat with each other. So the first place that we're going to look is in the speaker portal, the Conference Harvester, because the Q&A feature needs to be turned on by you. And the way to do this is through your tasks. So go ahead and log into the Harvester. If you've forgotten your access key, you can trigger a new one here. Now, once you're here, you'll see there is a new task under the very bottom here, under your handout task called Audience Q&A. So go ahead and click on that task. And then you'll need to choose which presentation you want to edit. So you'll be able to turn on the discussion board and the questions, for example, in one session, but not in another if you so choose. So once we choose our session, then you'll see that you have a task to complete for both the attendee discussion and also the audience Q&A. And we're gonna look now at what both of those options look like once they're enabled both from your perspective as a speaker and from the audience perspective. Now you can choose as a speaker to not turn these on. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but if you wanted to turn them on, then simply choose yes from the dropdown and then complete task in the upper right-hand corner. So here's an example of what a presentation will look like to conference attendees who are logged into the conference platform. So this is likely the first time that you've seen what this will look like as an attendee. Now, this is a session where I've uploaded some sample content here and I've actually adjusted things so that you can see things now that you actually can't see live on the website. Um, now, if you were logged in as an attendee, you would be able to click on this PDF button here in order to view the slides, to view the speaker slides. And then once this session starts, so I would say five minutes before, probably 9.55 a.m. on Wednesday, February 3rd, the slides and audio button would be live and the discussion and Q&A button would be live. So you would be able to then go in and view the presentation and to ask questions. And then it's time where your audience is able to engage with you. So here's what that looks like when we do that. If I was an audience member and I click, clicked on that discussion and Q&A button, it would pop up this window for me. So conference attendees are being told here what the difference is between a question and a discussion. Their question can be viewed by all attendees and those attendees can upvote if they so choose. Whereas the discussion tab is just for chatting with your fellow attendees. So we're putting that out there right at the beginning that there shouldn't be an expectation from your audience for you to be participating in the discussion, but you will be there to answer questions. So let's move over to the questions tab. I've put in a sample question here so that you can see what it looks like. And as an attendee, I submitted this question. So I do also have the option to delete my question if I no longer want it to appear or if it's irrelevant. Now, this question has been sent to the speaker and responded to publicly, but there is also an option for you to respond just to the attendee to respond privately. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like in the speaker view in just a second. But before we do that, let's move over to the discussion tab. So the discussion tab allows the attendees of my session to comment, have conversations with each other, give little shout outs. Good morning from Vancouver. Good morning from Halifax. And as a speaker, I'm not actually engaging in this conversation, but I do have some control over comments if they're um, inappropriate, if I don't want them to be published, you'll have the opportunity in the back end to remove those comments. Something you might want to consider is if you have co-presenters, you can split up your tasks. So if you are really interested in participating in the discussion, you can likely multitask even as a solo presenter. Um, having different screens open between your questions and your discussion module. But if you have multiple speakers, you can split that up. So one of you can answer the questions in the Q&A module of the speaker portal, and the other can participate in the discussion board. 
through the front end of the virtual conference site. A reminder though, you don't necessarily need to participate in the discussion board. That's not one of your required tasks as a speaker and that's not an expectation of, of the audience. So it's entirely up to you. But if you feel like you need some support with that, or if you'd like someone else to help moderate your question and answer or your discussions, then get in touch with us. We can go through those options with you. So now let's go back and review how this looks to you in the speaker portal. So here we are, we've gone back, I've logged into the speaker portal, the conference harvester, and I'm logged in with my credentials. You'll see right at the top above my tasks is the audience response system heading. So this is appearing here because I turned this feature on for my session. And the session appears here and I'm being notified that there is one question that has been submitted that I have not answered yet. So I'm going to click on the respond now button to do just that. So the respond now button opens up this screen, which looks very familiar, very similar to what audience is seeing, where you can see both the question and the discussion tabs. And right up front is the example, the sample question that I submitted. And as the speaker, you have the ability here to reject that question. You can also approve it and add your response here. You could also, if you wanted to uh, save some questions up, you could favorite it and save them to answer later in the session or maybe at the end if you've saved time and you want to answer them all together at the end. Totally up to you if you want to answer them throughout the session as they come up or save them all until the end. So here's what it looks like when you respond to a question. You'll have the opportunity to put your response in the response box and also to respond privately if that's appropriate in the situation. So you can mark the question then answered and your response will get pushed out where it then will look like this. And this is how your audience will see your response to a question. So that's essentially how the Q&A module looks to you as a speaker and to your audience, the conference attendees. A few other notes though. What if you can't? What if you now find yourself unable to join your session at the time that it's scheduled? I know here in Ontario, we all have our kids home until goodness knows when, and everyone is in a different situation right now in terms of their own capacity. I totally understand that. So if you're unable to join at the time of your scheduled session, let your planner know. At the very least, you won't turn on this feature in your tasks, and we will let your audience know that you won't be taking questions. But also, let's think of some alternatives. I don't think anyone here is necessarily against a conversation or questions. I mean, most of you are doing this because you're quite keen to share your knowledge and engage with your audience. So we could direct people to your social media or let them know you'll be answering questions at a later date. Or if you have any other suggestions, of course, we're happy to entertain those. Whatever we can do to assist with this, though, just let us know. A few other notes. So the Q&A module will be open to all conference attendees until the end of the conference, which is approximately 4 p.m. on Saturday, February 6th. So if your schedule allows, if your session is scheduled for Wednesday at 11 a.m., it would be great if you could log in a few times throughout the conference to answer any additional questions that might be coming in. Because remember, the audience will be able to view your session on demand once it's once it's aired, once the scheduled time has been completed, they can go in and view it any time. So um, it would be great to answer any additional questions that come in during the duration of the conference. And if you're open to taking questions once the conference is over, as many of you already do, feel free to share your contact info on your final slide so that um, speakers or sorry attendees know how to get in touch with you. Because remember that all conference content will be available on demand for six months, so until the end of August of this year. Also remember your Q&A will be captured in the on-demand version of your presentation, so others who are watching on demand will be able to read those questions and your responses. And finally, thank you. I know I've said it before, I'll say it again. 
You are amazing. And I know that I, that everyone at OLA, the whole conference planning team so appreciates you and the work you've done. I personally am in complete awe of the amount that we've all been willing to learn and to adjust to this new virtual conference format this year. So thank you. I know this isn't easy. I'm so grateful for your time, for your willingness to do this, for your ability to learn alongside me, for your willingness to overlook things that I might not know immediately. <laughs> um, as always, if you have questions about what we've gone over today or anything else, please reach out to your planner or to me or my team through our email here, superconference at accessola.com. And one final note, I put this in the email, but please don't forget to join the speaker Slack group. This is a space where you will be able to chat with other speakers, to connect with me, to connect with other planners, and I don't know, share some silly cat gifs. Um, it's a great place to learn from each other, to find answers to questions you might not have thought of yet. Consider this your uh, virtual speakers lounge. You can bring your own piping hot coffee. I was going to say terrible coffee. I don't want to I don't want to diminish the MTCC, but you know what I'm saying. Um, bring your own hot beverage to the speakers lounge, to the speakers Slack group, and I hope to uh, to see you there and to answer any other questions that might have come up. So thanks for joining us today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.